So here we are on another segment, and we're just gonna, I'm gonna stack these up end to end because I got distracted. I'm gonna bring this back over here. I got talking about this gun and that gun and showing muzzle brakes, and I was gonna show you something about measuring groups. I started off with the fact that when it comes to, there's nothing to quantify here, although I'll see a lot of guys measuring groups this size. Some guys will even measure groups this size if they're at 1,500 yards or something. No. <laughs> Understand, I don't have much to say good about shooting beyond 600 yards. A thousand, the only time it's worthy to shoot a thousand is when you're in a field with at least 20 other people and you can shoot against each other because on a given day, the idea that you can I'll see people walk up on the inner tube and say, how would you like me to hit a grapefruit? First shot at 600 yards every time. I say, BS! This is not going to happen, or at 1,000 or whatever. Wind conditions and whatever, your bullet might be blowing 10 feet. Uh, 5 feet either direction out. I just, they're all over the place. So, um, that still is not to say that groups like this occur beyond, you know, these are 100 yard groups, but they are crap 100 yard groups and there's no reason to measure them. But I wanted to bring out, I got set off onto this shoot and see thing during the last segment of the video that I was, some by with a shoot and see was talking about. <sighs> to measure these groups, to quantify these groups requires a caliper. This worked good because I was able to go get a caliper and put it in my pocket and keep it warm. It's cold out here, so this caliper should turn right on. Yes, it does. Um, just yesterday, I went on to check some video techniques, and there's this guy talking about accuracy, and he starts to measure groups, and he's showing groups like this and calling them whatever they are. And it's obvious he's showing one-inch groups and calling them 768 and 829 and whatever. Um, and he talked about how, now I can't do it up here because these groups were shot a couple of days ago. So they're all faded, the black is all faded out, but these were just shot, you know, these were shot like three or four days, I don't know. They sat, let's put it this way, they sat out there for a week. Then I came back and shot these within the last few days. So they've got a nice black. If you're going to measure groups, people, and you're going to talk to anybody that's semi-knowledgeable, the first thing you do is take the paper that you've got, find a clear, clean bullet hole, and measure that. That me this is a 338. Now, the, the, this dude on the inner tube takes a group like this, and he's shooting a 30 caliber, and he measures uh, pretty wide outside here, and then he squinches down, 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 and then he writes down that he's you know clear in here to the edge and clear in here to the edge, and he knocks off. 0.308 and he ends up with some group that's a full bullet hole smaller than it's supposed to be. No, you measure a bullet and you find another one and you find another one, you measure a bunch of these bullet holes and I'm finding out these 338 bullet holes are averaging about 297. 338 to 297 is significant, that's 40 plus thousands smaller than 338. So if you're going to measure these, you go ahead and measure wide point, and then you knock off, you don't knock off 338 ever. You don't knock off 308 if you're shooting a 308. You measure some bullet holes and you knock off that, and then you're still not close because the guys measuring this put reticles, circle reticles over. Um, or there shouldn't be, let's just point out the fact that I wanted to talk a little bit about, you do not go out there and measure your group and subtract the bullet diameter. That does not give you a reading that's useful. It tells people, then you can go brag about how well you're shooting, but in fact, you're 10, 15, 20, 30 thousandths off. Uh, some are worse than that. So understand, you're going to get laughed at by anybody who knows, has ever measured a group. If you go out there and measure point to point and subtract, in this case, 338 because um, well I was going to go over here and get a measuring micrometer but I thought it was right here but it's not <laughs> so <clears throat> the reason it's important though is because uh, 
I went to gunsmithing school. I learned a bunch of stuff. I dealt with normal people, and I went out and shot groups. And I would I would go on and on. I'd get groups down to somewhere in here or somewhere in here, and I was constantly making an excuse about flyers or wind. And everywhere you go, people are talking about, oh, you've got to shoot, you've got to get wind flakes, you got to... This is all crap. The bottom line is, until you're actually shooting dots, flags or no flags, whatever your setup is, your gun, your system is broken. You can fool yourself by measuring groups wrong. I've spent many, many years learning that today, I've got the flag is spinning again out here now, um, I've got a single flag set up, but it's an overcast, nasty day out there. I can go test stuff. I can go shoot. And uh, this could be a weather report under perfect conditions on a day like today, but it's really not. It has, um, it has too much angle in it. Weather reports are like worms. They're like caterpillars. They're -da 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 -da. There's not that much up and down. Even though I'm in a, my range is in a trough in the trees. Uh, the up and down is a matter of a half a bullet. So, I want to reiterate, quit! Where I'm going with this is, people quit fooling yourselves. That's one of the reasons I started this channel. It's funny because I learned this, I bought my first... I went to gunsmithing school and I did this and that and I thought I could shoot. And then I finally bought, back in the uh, mid-90s, I bought an actual bench rest gun and it just reset my clock. Then about 2000 I had Jim Borden build me another level of bench rest gun and that reset my clock again. Uh, now I've got a couple of those and I've gone to where I've got, bought them from other people, different builders, different people. I have my own opinions there but it's come down to a point where and, and through all of this I've been trying to from the start come up with a better way to adapt these bench rest principles to a useful gun in the field. Because a bench rest gun's really it's not much good anywhere except on the bench. Um, so I gotta check my focus again here and just see if I'm I never looking at the camera. I can't tell if I'm in focus or not, so maybe I am, maybe I ain't, but I'll just back it up a little bit as I go on my little digression here about what led me to this and what the, the, the function for this is to try to save you money over the long haul. Try to save you from uh, doing what I did, which is waste a bunch of money unnecessarily on stuff that doesn't work and man it's just really about the money it's about the fact that this is expensive stuff and if you get your information from the wrong place you'll end up fooling yourself forever and ever um so i bought my first bench second third i've got some bench rest guns and um It wasn't until, I, I spent time on the internet trying to explain, but there's no proof there. It wasn't until I got in an argument on the internet, that's what started this whole channel, just to fill the time up on this segment of the video. I went out and set up a YouTube channel just to prove that a concept called Gordying is repeatable. To show how I could put a barrel in the lathe, Gordy it into place using one little section of the barrel, and then pull it out, I could go shoot it, come back, put it back in, do this over and over. Then I decided, you know, this is kind of fun, so I'm going to go ahead and build a really cool gun, a Nouveau. I had never owned a Nouveau. I'm going to document the build on a Nouveau, and I'm going to use barrel nuts because, anyway, the next phase of, the, of this particular channel was the, the barrel nut thing went sideways because I found out, no, this isn't working. So, as I'm going through, I did promise you that I'm going to document the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's why I'm putting up stuff like this. I'm sorry, this is ugly. This is to show you that people stop fooling yourselves. When you're shooting groups like this, don't do ladder tests. Don't tune. Don't change components. Don't do... This gun right here, this is not a load. This is testing a platform with a just 3,200 foot per second load, if you remember from my last thing. That's all this is. It's already shooting bigger than it should ever shoot. If your platform is capable of shooting groups this big, it sucks. It's broken. No platform, 
No custom platform deserves to be considered if it can shoot a group this big. I've had bench rest guns before that when they go out of tune will shoot this big. Something needs to be fixed. They're finicky, they're picky, they're a pain in the butt. You're never going to win with them because you're going to go out on a range somewhere, you're going to be at a match somewhere, things are going to go out of tune and you're going to be shooting groups this size. That's useless. Right off the rack, first shot's out, he's got to be shooting something at least out in this size. You know, there's just nothing. If I see something like this the first time, for some reason I seem to think that when I put this big 338 up, this was the first group, but I went here and then I decided, ah, I'm going to come over here. Again, all documented, not going to go through it. This was coming up to it. This was, the, I believe, the first group. I thought, huh, something's working. It's shooting. No. Total crap. So, I just wanted to, uh, there's really nothing else here to, this is, this is all I did. I, I came in kind of unprepared, and then I ran short on the last segment. So, I don't have more stuff to show you here. I'm just going to wrap this up. Call it a throwaway and flip it in. But I felt like it was important that I'm going to hammer this again. Number one, that this is bad. Number two, being fooled by shooting sea targets is useless. And number three, don't go measuring the outside of the group and subtracting a bullet hole. Because the people that build this stuff, the people that matter out there, are going to laugh in your face.